Hey guys, welcome to episode five of Filter. It is here. I've had a few people ask me if they can ask questions about filming stuff. That's not really my thing. But, you know, even though it's not my bread and butter, I've asked a friend if they're prepared to do a guest spot to answer those questions with me. And that'll be a lot more useful than me trying to figure out how to give you good advice on filming. So they'll be doing an upcoming episode and that'll help because they are awesome. But I'll give you more information about that when we get closer to the time. So if you want to send filming questions in, just send them and then I'll put them in the queue just like all the others. That'll be good. So on Saturday night, One of my best mates, Luke Henry, he has a gallery opening at Crowbar's church space. So Crowbar has a dedicated art gallery area. That's where I had my exhibition, No Pits, Just Pits. So for those that came down, you know where that is. For everyone else, it's just in the back of Crowbar. So you need to be 18 to enter, but it's free. Henry's gallery is free. His gallery's called Everybody Deserves a Home, and there's two things that make the gallery so amazing. Firstly, Henry loves film. Everyone probably knows that. He loves it. He's always telling me about some camera he bought that was cheap as, and it's amazing. And it always is. I don't know how he gets those discounts. I I always tell him, can you start a blog about how to buy good cameras for cheap? I don't know how he does it, but his gallery is called Everyone Deserves a Home. And the two things that make it amazing are firstly, he's used this technique called stereoscopy. And if you don't know what stereoscopy is, it's a technique that uses, you know, two images to increase the illusion of depth. And it's perfect for the theme because His exhibition is about Queensland's rooftops and how lucky Australians are to have a safe place to rest their heads. A lot of us take that for granted, but we shouldn't because, you know, we're so lucky to have a place to sleep and a roof to cover our heads. Micah Projects is a local homeless charity that helps some people that aren't as lucky to have a roof over their head. And so that leads us to the second part that makes the exhibition that he's running so special because Henry's partnered with Micah Projects and has pledged all proceeds from the print sales to the charity, like all proceeds. So he, he's not, he's not making a dollar from this because he's a legend. You're not only doing something good for yourself by buying a print, You're also helping out Micah Projects, a great charity Henry has chosen to help out. He's a legend. He's a good friend and he's a legend. So from 6 p.m. this Saturday at Church Brisbane, which is in Crowbar, it's free. And it's the 17th of March for those unsure of where they are in the week. Sometimes I lose track of the week, but it's the 17th of March and you have to be 18 years old. There's no nudes, no, you know, graphic pictures or anything in there. It's just a great gallery and I encourage everyone to come along, but it's in a bar, so you've got to be 18 and I'll see you there. This week I was going to answer the normal three questions, but the first question that I put in to answer this week, it had a lot to go through. I was sort of planning it out and, and planning what I was going to say And then I was like, wow, this is going to be a whole episode on its own. So I wanted to isolate this question and really pull it apart because there's a lot of pieces to it. So I wanted to give it the time that it needed for it to be helpful. And that question is sent in by Caleb Pattinson. Caleb asked, I'm weighing up whether I want to start with gig photography and I have no idea where to start or what to think. And then he did that little emoji with the crying tears. It's a good question. Um, 
and something to give really deep consideration before you jump into it. Because it's expensive to buy even the most basic gear to start. It can be done, but it is a commitment because it needs lenses that open up to a certain aperture to capture enough light. And so there, there is that barrier of entry and it's going to hit your wallet just a little bit, give it a little ding. But if you choose to do it, you know, I think it's, I think it's worth it. But there are a few things to consider. So the first one, and I think is the most important reason, you know, you should be. So the first thing to consider is why you're doing it. Are you doing it for the right reason? Because if you're doing it to meet or to be close to musicians you admire or you want to just party heaps, you're going to have a bad time, not a good time. You have to be doing it because you love music and you love photography just as much as you love music. They have to blend into one. If you like one more than the other, you know, you're going to sort of grow tired of the other one. Photographers often seen by other people in the crew as a risk because, you know, some of them in the past have sweated the band and they get in the way of everything and they don't really know how everything works. They're just like a little bit green. So they slow everything down. And when time frames are really tight, even though you're probably actually allowed to be there and you've been invited to be there, if the crew have had a bad experience before, and their job has been made harder because of a photographer sort of being around and not really knowing how things work, you're going to want to leave the smallest footprint possible to sort of fit in and, you know, be productive within the space without hampering anyone else's productivity. And I think people, and I get it in um, Instagram DMs, People send me stuff and and they want to be an assistant photographer, but I know they don't actually want to be an assistant photographer because the first question they ask is normally, do you actually get to hang out with these bands? I flag that straight away because the next question is going to be, do you need an assistant? Uh, You know, yeah, I probably do need an assistant, but I'm also worried that the person doesn't actually want to be an assistant to learn the, they want to be an assistant because they want to meet the band or something like that. The band have a job being there. The manager has a job being there, sound guys, lighting guys, and so does a photographer. So you have to take your responsibility seriously when you're there, no matter how big a band is, or no matter how small a band is, take your responsibility seriously. So if you're in that space to meet anyone that you idolize or to meet anyone that you really admire before being there to take photos, you know, you're, it's not going to work out for you because you'll step on someone's toes or you'll sort of, you know, you'll just sweat, you'll just sweat everyone there and just make everyone, you know, feel really kind of awkward. It's meant to be sort of a safe space where everyone just does their job and uh, moves forward with everything. There's an element of trust there. So, you know, if you're not in it for the right reasons, it just won't work out for you. So if that's your goal, it's a small industry and it's not going to work out for you because word's going to travel really quickly. And on the other hand, you know, be professional, work hard and know when your time is to take the photos and you'll become the guy no one has to worry about. And that works out as well. So it's not all bad, but definitely know that you're doing it for the right reason rather than, you know, to look cool or anything like that. The second thing you got to consider is how hard are you willing to work to make it happen? Because you'll need to expect to work really hard and burn the candle at both ends. Because once the band finishes the set, You're finished taking photos, but then you have to go and edit them. And a committed music photographer will have the photos ready for when the band wakes up so they can promote the previous night's show. So for example, a common routine for me, I wake up, 
and I work a day job, which I mentioned in episode two. And then I get to the venue in the early afternoon to shoot the sound check. And then after sound check, I give my gear a really thorough clean so it's ready for the gig. And then I pull my laptop out and I usually catch up on day job work that I've missed by leaving early to go to the sound check. And then once I've finished that extra work, I shoot the band set and then I pack up and I chat to people till around sort of 1 a.m. It's inevitable that you want to sort of catch up with, with people, especially if you're busy leading up to the show. And then I go to the hotel if it's a tour and I export the photos from the memory card and take a shower. Then it's normally, you know, around about 1.30, 1.45. I select five photos that I want to give the band by the time they wake up and I edit those ones. And then I go to sleep at around 2.30 a.m. I wake up for a lobby call in between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. generally. It depends on when the flight is or when the van's leaving. And then I'll edit more photos on the flight or in the van. And then when I land, I do more day job work before the sound check again and repeat. So if, you know, if that pace is okay with you, then you'll do well because it just isn't for some people. I like that kind of routine, even though it makes me really tired. And by the end of the tour, when you've slept two to four hours each night, you'll become pretty frayed. So you need to be pretty level-headed because a lot of things won't go your way. That's life. That's not photography. That's just life. So you'll need to stay cool about it all, just like everyone else in the crew is doing. Everyone has challenges and everyone's low on sleep, the same as you. And you just have to fall in with that understanding and just be patient. The other thing you have to consider is how prepared you are to shoot a variety of bands and a variety of of genres because you know you need to expect and be prepared to shoot the smaller bands because it's not just big bands all the time you big bands don't just tour all the time and you're not always going to have an opportunity to shoot every big band there's no wish list that you know you'll always go hey that band's big enough for me to shoot that's an arrogant perception and it just won't work so i still shoot smaller bands as well and if you're doing it because you simply love music and you love photography you'll run out of patience doing it and i've seen many photographers lose patience with it there's probably only two or three that i can think of that are still doing music photography from you know the time that i started doing it and they aren't doing it for whatever reason it's their choice you know no one really knows what's going on but you know, we're talking a lot of people, if there's say like 15, 20 people in the pit in one city, and I only recognize two, maybe three of them at most, that really shows you what the fall off rate is. And that's life pressures or it's just lack of patience. So if you have a heap of patience, then you'll do well because it takes time and doing things that might not be your first preference is what you're going to need to do. Every shot you take is practice. And so every shot you take, you're going to get better and better at. It's just, every photo is going to look better. I've met some great people shooting things that I probably wouldn't have volunteered myself to photograph in the first place. And I've had some awesome times taking those opportunities. And I've got a heap of practice and I've learned heaps of lessons from that. And some of those bands, they became big and some didn't, or they just haven't become big yet. But all of them have been legends. I don't think I've met a bad, uh, you know, a band with bad people in it. I've been really lucky like that, but they've all been legends. And I wouldn't take back any time spent with them because they all gave me a chance to create some content. And sure, it benefited them having photos, but they didn't have to allow me to take those photos. So you should expect to meet some of the best, most dedicated people you could possibly meet. That, you know, take every opportunity because you'll meet more people photographing small bands than you will photographing big bands. Big bands are fun and they've got great lighting and 
they've got these luxuries that make your photos great, but they're, they're just people like the small bands are. And the small bands really need that injection of photos so they can help promote themselves and become a bigger band. And in turn, they're promoting you as well. That doesn't mean you have to work for free, but you know, find a mutual agreement with those small bands and just have fun. Just form friendships, network, you know, take some great photos. Great photos aren't taken exclusively of big bands. They're also taken of smaller bands as well, bands that are up and coming. So you have to be prepared if you want to stay busy and and stay sharp with your skills through practice, you're going to need to shoot big bands and small bands. So if all of that sounds good and it's something you're prepared to do, you know, anyone can do it. I recommend you contact some of the small bands. You just hit them up and you say, hey, you know, I'm just starting out. Be upfront, but say I'm starting out and I'd love to take some photos and build a portfolio and you can use them for whatever you like as well. And that'll create a mutually beneficial relationship and it will really help you create content and it will help them promote themselves. There are a heap of bands out there that would love that. They'd love someone to hit them up and say, hey, can I take photos? And so you shouldn't be worried about being upfront about need, you know, needing to get experience or not having much experience. That's okay with them because otherwise they're going to have no photos anyway. So there's nothing for them to lose. They'll organize a photo pass and then you don't have to do anything except show up and take the photos and build the content that you wanted. And that's exactly what I did. I just hit up a couple of small bands and said, oh, hey, I don't know really what I'm doing, but I really want to get into it. Would you be interested in allowing me to take some photos? Just throw me on the door and make sure I've got a photo pass and I'm happy to do that. And you can use the photos however you like. And the photos sucked. They were so bad. I show them sometimes when I do like lectures. I did a couple of lectures at QUT and one at the music industry college. And I show the first photo that I took and it's so bad. It's not in focus. It's not bright, but the band still used it because there's nothing else. No one else had ever taken a photo of them. I don't think the band's even together anymore. So that's your in. That's how you create content. That's how you create a music portfolio for the publications to see. So the publications know when they allow you to be a contributor, you can actually take a photo. And that's exactly what I did. So if you want to know where I went from there, I wrote a 100-page guide that you can get at learn.mattwalterphoto.com. Go there, and that's where my 100-page guide is. So that's it for this week. Don't forget that Henry's exhibition is this Saturday from 6 p.m. at Crowbar's Church in Brisbane. goes until late. Apologies to those I plan to answer this week, but I just didn't get around to it because this was a really meaty question The other two that I had on scheduled for this episode, I'll just move to next episode because there's always next week, right? In the meantime, have a good week, keep working hard, and I'm sending you all lots of positive vibes.